Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today I feel like discussing some pretty old but very interesting lore. You see, vampires are a very big topic within Warhammer Fantasy. There are absolutely many different types of bloodlines which sire their own vampiric children and those children end up either serving their sire, betraying their sire or going off to do their own thing. Now the majority of vampires within the Warhammer Fantasy universe are inherent evil. They've got their own wishes of power and it's usually very destructive to say the least. Vlad von Karstein, for example, a much beloved vampire within the fanbase, if he would have succeeded during the Vampire Wars, he would have twisted and turned the Empire into a kingdom of his own image, something destructive, something rotting. Humans would have been allowed to live, but they would have been used more as cattle than anything else, serving their purpose until, well, they got hungry. And the same would go for pretty much most of the vampires that we know in the lore of Warhammer Fantasy. But what if I told you that there was a vampire who did wish to build up his own kingdom, yet was more realistic in ways of thinking. Rather than slaughtering all his subjects, he would let them live and serve him as they were his own people. So long as they adhered by his laws, he would protect them even from the most dangerous of foes. Deep within the lands of the Border Princes, many, many people have started up their own kingdoms, micronations if you will. An imperial noble who wished to leave the Empire and strike out on his own, a disgraced Bretonian knight, and yes, even a vampire. Such a vampire is Gashnag the Black Prince. Yes, a Strigoi, one of the more bestial types of vampires, which are known to be quite volatile at the very best, as their bestial nature does take over and sends them into frenzies of pure destruction. Yet, some of the Strigoi have been able to suppress the rage within and accomplish feats that many of the other bloodlines would think that the Strigoi would not be able to do in their wildest dreams. Of course, we've heard of mighty empires like that of the Strigos Empire. The times of Yushoran have long passed. Many of the Strigoi have scattered and gone into hiding, living within caves, sewers, and mountain passes far away from civilization. Yet, some of the Strigoi still hold some ambition. The majority of them wish to reform their own empire, so that they may rule as an undisputed power once again. However, Gashnag does not wish to do so. Rather than living on old legacies and old dreams, the Strigoi vampire struck out on his own to form a kingdom in his own right. Now, this is a character that doesn't really have that much lore, yet is probably one of the most interesting vampires to have ever existed. As far as I'm aware, there are only two entries that exist for him in the 7th edition army book for the Vampire Counts in 2008, and also the Warhammer Fantasy roleplay supplement Knight's Dark Masters, which was centered around the vampires and pretty much all the bloodlines that we know of, barring the missing ones. But let's read over his entry into the 7th edition army book. The border principalities are wild lands ruled over by dozens of robber barons and petty nobles. These small provinces war frequently and are beset by raids of greenskins from the south. Yet there is one town protected by a soaring dark citadel, which has survived the trials and tribulations of the borderlands for many centuries, outliving many of the longest ruling dynasties of the region. This small kingdom is the domain of Gashnag, the Black Prince. Scion of Ancient Strigos. While other vampires of the Strigoi claw an existence in the filth of old crypts, dreaming of glorious past, Gashnag has raised himself from the sewers, quite literally. In him is reborn the ancient power of the Strigoi, or so he tells unthinking courtiers. The realm of Gashnag has developed a sinister reputation amongst the other border princes. Wolf packs prowl its borders like patrols, and merchants who pass into the cursed lands never return. There are tales of foolhardy nobles who besiege the Dark Citadel, and even more tales of their grisly deaths. Though none of the townsfolk have seen them, hundreds of crypt ghouls haunt the catacombs of the citadel. By secret ways, they move into and out of the castle to act as the court of the Black Prince. 
bringing news of the wider world and dispatched on errands of their Dark Lord. The wolves that prowl the realm of Gashnag answer his call too. No flocks of the local farmers have ever been harmed by these voracious packs, yet the livestock of rival towns seem to be plagued by their attacks. When a tribe of ravenous ogres descended from the Black Mountains and laid waste to three kingdoms in a rampage of hungry destruction, it was Gashnag who rode out alone to meet them. He returned the next night and planted a pole in the town square, adorned with the heads of a dozen ogres. It's not just protection that Gashnag offers his subjects, a strange air of romance and daring surrounds his kingdom, drawing all manner of devoted yet misguided folk. For all his bestial appearance and brutal appetite, Gashnag is not without wit and guile. He has practiced hard to conserve his most vicious rages for enemies on the battlefield. Gashnag has even traveled abroad, swathed in a thick cloak to hide his misshapen form. Through his agents, Gashnag has paid bards and troubadours to spread tales of his greatness and good looks. Across the old world and as far afield as Araby, these fanciful tales speak of a dashing prince disinherited from his fortune who seeks a loved one to provide him with an heir. It is perhaps best not to speak of what Gashnag would do should such a suitable lady of breeding declares her interest. I don't know about you, but I would not want to breed with a Strigoi vampire, but before we continue to discuss, there is a little bit of lore that we could also talk about. His entry in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay is smaller, has some similar details, but it is important to discuss because it does provide a lot more context. There is more than one Strigoi vampire ruling a small kingdom in the Border Princes, but the most famous of these is Gashnag. A child in darkness of Vorag, Gashnag is determined not to make the same mistakes of his sire. He rose to notoriety slowly, and he has borrowed from the Lemians the gifts of subtle manipulation. Resisting his brethren's taste for being worshipped as a god, he has instead recast himself as a romantic hero. He has paid bards and storytellers to spread rumours that he is under a terrible curse that causes him to appear beastly and savage, but that he was once strikingly handsome. Under the sobriquet, the Black Prince, he appears on his battlements only at night and sees no one but his closest advisors, ever stroking the mystique that surrounds him. Gashnag also saves all his violence for the enemies of his tiny kingdoms, and the only time he does appear in public, his hideous form is hidden beneath a huge and heavy cloak as he swiftly rides to mete out justice or defend the borders. When a gang of ogres from the Black Mountains began raiding villages under his protection, Gashnag immediately rode into the mountains alone. He returned the next night with a dozen heads on a spike, which he planted in the village square so his people would know they were safe again. The combination of dedicated security and romantic illusions has caused the province to swell in population in recent years. If this continues, the Black Prince may very well succeed where his sire failed, and return the Strigoi to a great power once again, and one far closer to the Empire. So the reason why this character is so interesting is because he is much smarter than the average Strigoi. Yes, they're not all stupid, but more of them fall to the bestial nature of their bloodline, and while we have heard of very intelligent Strigoi who've been able to form kingdoms, empires, and what have you, it's still extremely rare from that bloodline itself. So seeing this happen, seeing him smart enough to realize that maybe human subjects might work into his favor, rather than going with the typical, I want to be worshipped as a god, it's more, I want to be respected, I want to be feared, but in a kingly sense. The fact that even the creatures under his control, you know, direwolves, ghouls, and so on, are not feeding on his subjects means that he has quite a control over the area, meaning that perhaps this area of the Border Prince territories might actually be one of the safest in the Warhammer Fantasy universe, provided that you don't break the law. I imagine that lawbreakers or pretty much anyone that going against his ideals would be killed or eaten or something even worse that only a vampire could be able to do. I imagine that the existence of Gashnag must be a lonely one considering that he is trying to find a mate, possibly someone that he himself can turn into a Strigoi and have someone to rule alongside his mighty power. It's a shame that this character really wasn't expanded upon enough, especially since, yeah, he did get
get a pretty decent entry in the 7th edition army book. Usually that type of stuff means that more stuff is going to be done. It just never really happened because, you know, end times and so on. And there was a drastic change between 7th and 8th. That's something that a lot of people seem to forget. 7th edition was also the mark of when the vampire counts went from all the different bloodlines to let's just focus on the Von Karsteins, which is a massive shame. However, there is a chance that we will see this character in the future. When it comes to Warhammer the Old World, well, he's been ruling for centuries, and the Old World setting is only a few hundred years prior, so yeah, he could actually be active. When it comes to Total War Warhammer, if they're looking for an interesting Strigoi character, since Vorag is gone, Yushoran is gone, though mind you, they can always change that around and bring them back, it could be quite interesting if they would bring in Gashnag. However, it's very close to the vampire counts though, so it might not be too unique. We're gonna have to wait and see from there. But what do you think about this vampire, the supposed good vampire in the Warhammer setting? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's start a bit of a discussion. And yes, before anyone says it, yes, good is very subjective and a lot of characters in the Warhammer setting are more grey or evil than anything else. It's very likely that this character could have had a complete change of personality should he have formed a proper empire, but it does seem like he was more grounded than the other vampires that we've seen in lore, most of them already being quite psychotic from the get-go. But yeah, let's start a discussion. It's always cool to talk about these things. 